Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Gimme, gimme, gimme Jimmy Woods this week on Boss Battle. Welcome to Boss Battle number 143. It's showing what your writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and we'll talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F.J. Tom, but before we get to the infotainment and general frivolity of this podcast, let's see what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What would you achieve? More cats. Yep. Collected. Cats collected. <laughs> uh, I upgraded. I now have two areas for the cats to, to be in. That's uh, what I'm saving for. Yeah, I, uh, I did that today. Um, I don't know how many cats I've unlocked so far. I lost count. Um, plus, I don't know if they give you more. No, you still get to, let's see, one, two, three, four, um, 16, 19, uh, 23, 26. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chachi Possessed Counts. Yep, 29, <laughs> 30. 30 out of, I, got, I got 30 out of 41 cats. Um, I did a story on Colossatron today, which is uh, the, the game I was going to review last week before <laughs> this damn cat game came into our lives. Um, so, yeah, uh, everything is uh, pretty much back to normal, I guess. Uh, as normal as it can be, despite cats. Have I said cats enough? Um, I'm up to 179 saved uh, attempts at the machine for the next Crossy Roads update. Uh, so that means as soon as the update happens, I will unlock every character that's not a secret character. Nice. Um, I, there's there's absolutely no way around it. Um, I it has to happen with with by the time it happens, I'll have over 200 attempts at the damn machine. So mm -hmm. if I don't unlock all the characters in the first go, I'm gonna be pissed off. What if they never announce another Crossy Road update? Well, that's the thing. They never announce them. They just happen. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. Um, if there's never another Crossy Road update, then I'll, I'll probably cry. <laughs> It'll be a sad day. Um, played some blobs with Sorg, uh, Advanced Yay. Warfare. Yay. Um, and that's about it. Cool. Uh, Sorg, did you achieve anything this week? Nope. Oh, my God. Pretty much, I, uh, nope. Immortals. I've uh, been enjoying oh. their uh, online game with Payback and everything like that. Uh, played a little bit of Goat Simulator. Uh, bought, have not yet booted up, though, the Goat Simulator Zombie Edition. Uh, <laughs> but it is on, oh, a little bit of WW2K on the phone as well. And Flops. All right. I achieved, um, I played, I'm playing Simpsons Tapped Out, and of course, Cats Collected. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's about it this week. I really didn't do much video gaming. Okay. Uh, you to see Mad Max, which that's a different show. That's a different show entirely. <laughs> uh, Bobby, you're blacked out. I don't know if you're aware on the video. Oh, okay. So um, we'll work with that. But anyways, continue with the show I, as normal. You got for my audio, audio, right? For the audio people. Okay, that's fine. They don't need to see my face. Okay. <laughs> All right, Chachi, you want to send us around the net? It's not time for our video game thing, it's from around the internet. Somebody get the phone! What? Uh, I heard a phone while you were doing that. I got it. Hello? Somebody no, he's it. not here right now. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, it's not up yet. I've had a crazy-ass week. It seems to be the theme. Uh, it'll be up tomorrow morning. But this is what's going to be in it. You get a sneak peek. Uh, there's a Super Mario-themed apartment available for rent in Tokyo on Airbnb. Um, it is all Super Mario-themed. Um it's available to rent for around $77 a night. Uh, it accommodates four people, two bedrooms, and one bathroom. Uh, it comes with a Retcon 5 console and a number of classic games. Ooh. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it's pretty pimped out with uh, all Nintendo or, uh, Mario themed things. There's uh, question boxes everywhere, um, power ups, and, you know, the likes. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, if you're in Tokyo, uh, Megoro area, check it out. That's awesome. $77 a night. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll be booked, though. So I, I imagine that people who live in Tokyo are probably booking it just to stay there. So 
Uh, there's that. Um, a League of Legends pro quits and tells all in a revealing 18-page essay. Um, it tells all about what? Uh, the life of a professional gamer. Oh, okay. Um, and everything that he went through in the uh, five years that he was a professional gamer. Oh. Um, e essentially, it, it all sums up to no one even plays it properly. Hmm. <laughs> um, no, he. Uh, th this makes the second pro gamer to... Uh, retire within the past couple months. Oh, wow. uh, first, you had, you had the guy from uh, uh, Call of Duty, um, Optic. He retired. And uh, now this guy. And they were both uh, top of their game. Um, but essentially, it boils down to burnout uh, for both of them. So I, I feel like this is something that you're going to notice a lot more. Um, original pro gamers are going to start stepping back because they, they feel like they're mm -hmm. not putting in uh, the hundred and fifty percent that they they want. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it'll be linked. You can go. It's a it, all it is is a link to a Google document. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go over and uh, read all eighteen pages if you want. But oh. he breaks it down by uh, seasons, um, changes to the team and everything involved um, that he went through as far as being a professional gamer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I can't wait to see what other professional gamers just call it quits. Um, Learn about the seedy underbelly of the uh, of, of the video game culture here. Yeah, I, essentially, I, I I bet I haven't read it all, um, but I, I assume it's going to be a lot of uh, a team turmoil. Like uh, that, that seems like the only thing that it could really be. What uh, as understand? far as it, uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, if you're something that you're successful at and have put in a lot into put your heart and soul into like this mm. there's a lot of the same stories and right. and there's a lot of people calling and texting chachi apparently i keep hearing your phone buzz oh sorry <laughs> so i just no, want to let you know on just, audio <laughs> just twitter yeah you're a very busy man okay a lot of yeah. people getting hold of chachi uh chachi place is but, coming uh, up a few months he's getting all the calls in place and all the sponsor deals and all everyone, that stuff everybody wants to be me who's gonna uh, uh, Good. What's that? No, go ahead. I was going to go a joke, uh, but never mind. We'll save that. Okay. We have plenty of time. Uh, for so it. yeah, yeah you'll, you'll be able to check that out. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, uh, Cinefix, one of my favorite YouTube channels. Um, and I know I say that a lot because I have a lot of favorite YouTube channels. Uh, but Cinefix is the one that takes movies and turns them into old school 8 bit and 16 bit games. That's awesome. Uh, redid all of the sprites for Mega Man. And turned them into uh, it turned it into Captain America: The Winter Soldier. This is Mega Man. A, a lot of the okay. just the characters. Okay, I can see by the play. Okay, I got it. Yeah, just just the characters. Um, but uh, it, it is well as always well done. Um, I would play mm. the crap out of it if it were an actual thing. Um, but yeah, it's all like it, it's it kind of looks like uh, oh, what is it? Oh, I can't remember the name of that game. Hmm? Uh, I, Bionic Commando? Yes, Bionic Commando. How did Spider. I know that? How did I know that's where you're going with this? Well, it, 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 it's like a mixture of the two. Uh -huh. um, but it, it's quite amazing, and see. everything matches as per usual. So, yeah, yeah, you'll be able to check it out in the morning. You will see the tweets. And if you're not following us on Twitter, it's at Insert Coin TV. Also, there's parallax scrolling in this that you definitely didn't have on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's always going to be upgrades when you can do mm. stuff in a style later. That's awesome. I love it. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you this week in video game things from around the internet. Nah, 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 all right. We got no Bobby, so uh, I'll take over the Bobby duties. If you want to, maybe we'll alternate our stories here uh, until he comes back, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chachi. Yeah, that's fine. We might have him back, but uh, I'll get started this while he settles back in. Uh, and actually, this is one that I'm interested in. I'm a Doom fan. We, you know, John Josh, you know, we we played Doom back in the day, right? I think you were part of that. Yeah. Uh, you are, you are a Doom man. I am a Doom man. It was my game. It was something different. I loved it back in the day. Played the crap out yeah. of the shareware. No, I never bought it until Steam, like 10, 15 <laughs> years later. Uh, but still, no one ever bought Doom. No, no, no. You really knew the first ten levels of Doom, and that's yeah, about no it. No one ever bought Doom. No one ever no. bought Quake. But we have a super, super quick uh, teaser came up this week of Doom. 
what Doom, whatever. It's just called Doom, not Doom 4. And you get a little bit there. And uh, one of the characters called The Revenant, uh, this actually, uh, th- th- this is in the article that Bobby has linked, but I had one where they took The Revenant. Um, it's a uh, kind of a skull character with uh, guns on his back, all kinds of stuff. Introduced, he has I think, a gun backpack. Yeah, like a gun pack backpack. And uh, they introduced him, I think, in Doom Two, if I recall, and they cl- showed like him versus uh, Doom Three versus uh, back then. So uh, really cool. I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I played through the entirety of Doom Three. Uh, I don't think I got through the entire. I don't even know if I had the expansion pack for that one or not. But um, definitely a game I'm all into, and uh, and I'm excited to see what they do with the new one. You know, I, I feel like it's not the original team, doesn't have the original vibe. You know, John Carmack's off doing Oculus Rift and, and, and you know, it's, it's just a company with all those brands, you know, and it's not even like Blizzard, I don't think, in importance anymore. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but still, it's 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 any callbacks to something like that. I don't care about Wolfenstein games anymore. I really don't. Haven't for the longest time. And, and fine, they're doing whatever they are with it. But Doom is still Doom. And Doom is still, I will take a rehash of Doom. <laughs> you know, you're like, please do Doom better. You know, it, it was a good game to begin with. Do it better. Let's see what let's see what Doom looks like today in today's technology. Why not? See, but that's the thing I don't want, though. I do, I, but I, for Doom, it's okay, man. Did you? Without, no, I, I, I think one of the things that made Doom Doom was the the graphics, the style. Mm. But the, not, but, I don't want... but those were new. The whole the Doom was big because it took like what was sign 3D and it was our first first person shooter that was like, oh man, this is great. I can go everywhere and do all these things and hit all these and collect these red keys. Um you <laughs> know, I, I, I and and it really like popped for that, right? And yeah, I what was, what was the game that it did a couple years ago? Was it Rage? Right, right. Which didn't yeah, I never even very played well. it. I found a picture for you, Bobby. Uh-huh. It's you sleeping on a couch, but it's a picture. Oh, of that's you. fine. Okay, yeah. okay. So what, what I, as long as you have my audio, I guess we'll roll with it. Yeah, we'll roll with this. Hey, hey sleepy. Yes, yeah. Sleepy Sleep Bobby's me. telling us about them. Yeah, but so Rage was like the new property they did, and mm-hmm. I played like the iPad kind of quickie version of it, but I never, I, I just never went for it. It just like, eh, it looks all right. It's Mad Max or Borderlands kind of stuff, right? Whatever. So, uh, but you know, going back to the well, sure, why not? I mean, everyone else is, so yeah, I, I can't, I can't be mad at them for it. I mean, it, this game will probably sell. It'll sell well because, I mean, like you said, it's Doom. Um, everyone and their mother played Doom. <laughs> I believe, I believe it's <laughs> uh, the first shot he plays. Um, this is the, Doom was the game on Xbox that I was playing when Sally Wigan walked in. And sat down yeah. next to me to play. Yes. Did she play and, Doom? No, she, well, she, uh, I, I was going to play uh, something like Sonic or something with her. Uh, that was my plan. And then she was like, can we shoot shit? <laughs> and I'm like. I love Aunt Sally. I'm like, why, yes. Why, yes, Miss Wigan, we can. And so yeah, we did. She's the best. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, it, it's Doom. It's going to sell. Um it, my my opinion aside, because uh, you know I, these guys don't call me and ask me what they should do, even though they should. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'll play it. I, I play it before I play Wolfenstein. I haven't played Wolfenstein still, so I heard Wolfenstein's actually really good too. I, I'm sure it is, so. but it's not. It's not to share where. <laughs> so all right, all right. Uh, now that I'm back. <laughs> Are you taking over again? I'm taking over again. Um, okay. It appears that Bungie has restored the, their most re- notorious line from um, that beta a long time ago. The wizard came that came from the moon. Uh, they restored it uh, about five months ago, though, and they didn't <laughs> tell anybody. Um, some people are only noticing it now because it occurs very early in the game's main story, and uh, the player's ghost doesn't always say the line. Um no, no. I, 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 I'll pick it up. Uh, but okay. essentially, uh, in the beta, uh, uh, Peter Dinklage, uh, it, it was leaked before it even came out that he, he sang, said this line. Um, and they took it out because uh, f- reasons. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why they took it out, but they took it out. Um, and it, it was an uproar. So they uh, apparently snuck it back in. I stopped playing the game, so I had no idea. Uh, it was... 
yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm not into that story and what entirely is going on there. So. Uh, no one is. Yeah, yeah. I okay. What's well, Peter Dinklage? So I'm I'm a big yeah. fan of that. All right. I guess I'm appropriate to take on the next one here uh, that I've not pre-read. So let's roll with this. Uh, <laughs> Mortal Kombat X is a little. Oh, it moved the the thing as I was reading it. Thank you, Polygon. Mortal Kombat X's little old lady has her revenge. Uh, in the marketplace, you can. There's a background character known as Blanche who has suffered immeasurably since the uh, fighting game was released, and apparently uh, she gets a little bit of revenge here uh they're having a lot of fun with it you know it's uh it, it, and i guess uh what is she a playable character now is that what's going on i'm not too deep into x yet but <laughs> even on the mobile version yeah, but she the, is not. but you know mortal kombat continuing to do you know pretty pre, you know pretty decent uh and everything so uh so yeah that's pretty pretty cool so. well like the thing is I, I, she was if she was just a background character that you could throw around like, that's why she's getting revenge. Because, I mean, she was always there, and you could just toss her around and use her as a weapon, I guess. And so, now she she can get revenge. Oh! <laughs> hmm. You remember the uh, pit levels um, yeah. in, in the originals where, you know, you did that special uppercut, and it would either go up into the level or uh, down into the, the spike pit? Right, right, right. Uh, that's essentially what it is. Um, a, a certain uh, button combo, and Blanche will uh, finish the fight for you. Um, essentially, you knock him down in front of her, uh, hit the right button combination, and she just hops on tops of them, hops on top of them, and starts beating the crap out of them. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a brutality. So yeah, <laughs> you know, an old woman can only take so much <laughs> before mm -hmm. you. Uh, Piss her off. Alrighty. Uh, Bobby might be back. I'm not sure. So, <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Hello, yes. Bobby. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yes, yeah. we can hear you. We got. Are you on your phone? Uh, yeah, I'm on my phone. I'm doing this gorilla style. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> so. Alrighty. <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll try this. Do you, do you want to take over, Sorg? Uh, we'll see where we're at here. Again, I have not pre-read any of these, but that's okay. Uh, okay, the Nerdist is reporting Sony is winning. I think I heard some rumblings about this. Uh, mm -hmm. So the PlayStation 4 is... Uh, uh, this is winning the race, and it's not even close. For all intents and purposes, it's winning the console wars. What's the uh, distinction on why they're winning here, according to these articles, uh, Bobby or, or Chachi? Because they're selling, they've are selling. they sold over 20 million consoles, which is <laughs> doubling uh, the Xbox. In, plus, uh, they, plus they have all the exclusive games that, you know, Bloodborne, Street Fighter V, mm -hmm. uh, other exclusives that they have announced that they're just – beating all the, the their competitors like soundly and you know what it's not really surprising because i mean it, it flip-flops i mean uh playstation 2 handily crushed xbox mm -hmm. um xbox 360 did the same to ps3 so i mean it it, it goes back and forth nintendo's a non-factor at this point um maybe the next console will will help them but at this point they're not they're not in the fight. <laughs> Nintendo's the little brother that's just sitting off to the side watching at this point. Yeah. Um, and that makes me sad. I will add that. Um, but yeah, it, so I mean, yeah, at this point, it is safe to say that uh, PlayStation is winning at this point. But I don't expect it to last for the next console. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I are mean, you, it'll... Are you guys surprised that they're winning? No, not, really, not really, not really. Xbox was really rough out of the gate, but just bad PR right off the bat. Right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, Xbox uh, stumbled at the starting line. I, I mean, they tripped over their own feet. And, uh, I think. Oh, go ahead. Uh, PlayStation took the ball and ran with it. So. I think what happened to Xbox or what happened to Microsoft happened to uh, Sony after the PS2's popularity. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you remember, that, if you remember, PS2 was like the the dog to beat mm. and then microsoft came out and just you know took over with the xbox 360 and then they got confident and they didn't learn from microsoft or from sony's mistakes and they did the same exact thing sony did you know right mm -hmm. so but nintendo's still the third place console <laughs> just chugging along 
Yeah, but you know what? It, it's there's nothing to be ashamed about with staying no, yeah. the course. Yeah, and I and mean, it's, they know they're on. Right, they're still in business. They're still selling. So I mean, there's nothing nothing wrong with staying the course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I think I can take the next sword. One sword, please. Let's let's give us a shot. <laughs> All right, uh, Casey Hudson, a 16 year veteran of Bioware. Uh, said he oversaw projects uh, like Mass Effect. Uh, is now the creative director of Microsoft Studios, uh, and according to an al- announcement by Xbox Wire today. Uh, Microsoft reveals, revealed HoloLens, an augmented reality headset that overlays holograms on the world around its wearers, in January of 2015. Uh, Hudson said he got to try on the HoloLens before it was released and was blown away. So he basically joined the team because of this, this HoloLens. But he's not only going to be doing like working on the Hololens, he's also going to be working on uh, innovative new Xbox titles and helping them find success through uh, clear direction and creative vision. Um, is this the kind of creativity and innovation that Microsoft is missing in its battle with Sony? Do you think that they gained a little ground by adding this guy? I mean, he he did Mass Effect. He knows the future. What do you guys think? It, I, the only way this is going to beat Oculus Rift is if it beats the price point. Um, that that's the only way. Uh, they can bring in whoever they want, and it's not going to make a difference. The the only way another VR headset or, or Hololens or whatever a reality headset is going to beat Oculus Rift at this point is price. So I mean, if this if the Hololens can come in at under two hundred dollars, then they got a shot. But until that happens, Oculus Rift has it, and they should just go home. Mm-hmm. Or do you think this is the new Connect? Like, do you think this is what Connect was supposed to be for Microsoft? No, no, definitely no, not. No, this, this is, is something this else. Is, from the sounds of it, it's it's Virtual Boy that you wear. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's, that's that's a ringing endorsement, right? I, I mean, that's what this headset sounds like, and and <laughs> that's why because honestly, I'm excited for this moment in gaming, but I don't expect it to last. Mm. Like, I don't see this taking off, and I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see this taking off with so the think, size. Yeah. What's that? You think it's gonna be like a fad, like maybe the Dance Dance Revolution guitar yeah. games? Yeah, I don't, I don't see it as it sticking around. It'll be around for a few years, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna become a permanent fixture. Um, and and the reason of it is because look at the headsets. I mean, how much weight do you think those? I mean, how much effort does it take to hold your head up while you're wearing that thing? You can see little kids like running around just falling over. Right. I mean, headsets. this is this is the Wii all over again. <laughs> Like when the Wii came out, they had to release the uh, the PSA to tell you to wear the strap because people were putting their remotes through TVs. Like there are gonna be kids or full grown adults for. I mean, I can see myself running into the wall, like getting up because I have to go to the bathroom and completely forget that I'm wearing this ten pound thing on my head and run into the wall. Yeah, I, I mean, the I, I restate my my original point. The only way anyone is going to come close to what Oculus has accomplished is price. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. If if Microsoft, PlayStation, whoever can undercut Oculus Rift by a good $100, $150, they have a shot. But even then, it's a long one. I just want a virtual Mm. (laughs) one. Yeah, I I screw buying an Oculus or a HoloLens. I'm kind of... and I've been looking. I, I'm pretty much set on just going on eBay and buying a Virtual Boy. So. You mind of headaches? Yeah, I know. Back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what doesn't cause headaches though? Sword. Oh, pizza, pizza, pizza. At least if you're if you're getting a headache from pizza, you're doing it very, very wrong. I, I don't even know how that would happen there. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com uh, delivering. Pittsburgh podcasting some pizza in a very fine way. Some good stuff up here in Beachview and Carnegie, PA. Uh, really cool people. Really cool pizza. Please check them out. They've been supporting the shows uh, with pizza. With the, our guests that join us here on podcast night. 
a lot. So, and uh, and there you go. There you go. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. Check them out, please. All right, Bobby. All right. We're about to go to California. Before we start, can I just say that this announcement made me go on Google Play and buy The Wizard and nice. watch it in the same day? Mm-hmm. It does not hold up. Yes, it does. I love that movie. <laughs> that movie is still incredible. I, I, don't, I don't know. As owner operator Vince or CoinToBegin.com, I'm going to have to warn you to watch what you say going forward or, or I will fire you. I fell asleep last time I watched it. I have to re- it's on Netflix, isn't it? Or did they take it off of there? I didn't know it was on Netflix. It was on Netflix for a while. I don't know. It might still be up there or not. I don't know. But, all right. The road to the Nintendo World Championships 2015 will begin with qualifiers on May 30th at eight Best Buy stores across the USA. Uh, the qualifiers will run from 10 to 7 uh, local time, and you'll want to get to the store early, they say. Um, a Best Buy ro- representative told Polygon that uh, registration begins at 9 a.m., and the field entrance will be capped at 750 players per store on a first-come, first-served basis. All right. Players will be competing in the championship mode of Ultimate NES Remix, so if you want to want to brush up on your skills, that's on the 3DS. Uh, they're going to be playing Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3, and Dr. Mario. The winners of each of the eight qualifiers will move on to the final event, which will take place June 14th at the Nokia Theater in California, live in Los Angeles. Uh, they'll be joined by eight other competitors selected by Nintendo, which, that's a little bit shady. Uh, the finals will take place over multiple rounds with a variety of Nintendo games, according to Nintendo. So, do you think they will unveil Super Mario Bros. 4 finally? <laughs> um, in all seriousness, though, the, 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 the final round question this week is, should Nintendo be focusing on this event or making up the ground to Sony and Microsoft? Or do you think this is just a fun little distraction to distract from the fact that they really don't have much to do at E3? I, the fact that you're even insinuating that this isn't something Nintendo should be doing, mm-hmm. I want to smack you. This is exactly what Nintendo should be doing. Yeah, I know. Just kidding. Uh, I, like I said earlier in the, the Sony story... Nintendo has been holding steady. They're not losing ground. They're not gaining ground. They're staying the course. This is exactly what Nintendo needs to bring back focus. They're doing Nintendo. Right. Mm -hmm. Nintendo, ever since uh, PlayStation and and Xbox uh, came about, Nintendo was no longer about being uh, the the front runner, but more Mm -hmm. as the, the place where everyone goes because it's safe. I have a serious question about the wizard, though. Well, uh, let me finish. But uh, it, this is it, this is exactly what Nintendo should be doing. As long as they're working on Zelda at the same time. Let me point that out. <laughs> Maybe it, Zelda it, one of the games they unveil. If they're working on Zelda... No, they already said it wouldn't be at E3 this year. If oh. they're working on Zelda at the same time as this, then that's fine. Keep well, doing it. They said... It wouldn't be at E3, but they didn't say it wouldn't be at the World Championships. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, yeah, this is exactly what Nintendo should be doing. Sorg, sure. anything? Uh, no, dealing with another issue here. But, uh, no, yeah, Nintendo, anything to make the people happy. <laughs> and uh, they've only recently uh, done that, again, with the championships, with everything else. Something that, makes again, makes me remember... Back in the day in Nintendo Power when I got excited about this, and I talked about on Mini Boss uh, about this uh, earlier this week. I'm excited for it. Good, Nintendo stepping the right ways. And the video is hilarious yes. of them announcing it with Reggie. Uh, Riz has been going on about Reggie, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so, he has been. Yep, yep. So uh, so there you go. <laughs> um, my, my serious question, though, about The Wizard. Mm-hmm. How did he find the warp whistle so fast with only seeing the game right then and there? Like, how did he know about that? Hey, if you look at it, it looks different than the rest of the screen. Okay. Um, it, it, honestly, yeah, one of the things that you can tell about that level is up until that point, it, with the exception of the beginning, all of the ceiling is black. Like, everything above 
uh, okay. where you are is all black, and then you get to that part, and there's suddenly a ceiling there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it, especially because he is the way he is, like a rain man for video games, um, okay. you, you put the pieces together and you try it. So, yeah, science, boom! <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for us this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry about the uh, crappy audio on my end. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at InsertCoinTV, and you can visit us on InsertCoinToBegin.com. New articles going up daily, and you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at eight on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Special thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for the uh, doing the notes for us every week. At Sorgatron, you have anything to plug? All the things that are going on on SorgatronMedia.com. We got to talk. Oh, CoinOp. Uh, Chachi, you'll be coming with me, I believe, on Saturday. The yep. CoinOp. Uh, oh, geez. I can't remember. The, wait, I got a card here. Ah, I got a card it's to remember. the CoinOp Hall of Fame. Co- CoinOperated uh, Gaming Hall of Fame and Museum. Uh, we talked to Chris Aiken, the uh, or Aiken, Aiken. Oh, damn it, I, for, I forget now. Damn it. Uh, but no, we talked with them on Awesome Chat. Go check it out this Thursday, awesomecast.net. I'll share it over, of, her, of course, on InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, we talked about they have hundreds in good condition and rare games. Pinball games you can't find anywhere. They have, not under class, for you to play. Up there in Hopewell Township, just north of Pittsburgh here. Uh, we're very excited for this. It's going to be a lot of fun. A great conversation with him, so please check that out. And uh, everything else going on on SorgatronMedia.com. Yeah! There you go. Chachi, you have anything to plug? At Chachi says on the tweets, sending out the messages in 140 characters or less, uh, in June, we'll make the announcement. So. There you go. All right. Uh, at J-Town, host of uh, Insert Corner to Begin, presents Let's Play. Or, uh, for now, you keep kissing the wizard, you're going to need a new job. <laughs> Which you're listening to right now. Um, and at Bobby F. J-Town on Twitter. That'll do it for us. Game over, everybody. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.